What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to find correlation. If you don't know what correlation is, please go back and watch my video over correlation. So correlation, recall, is a numerical value that measures the strength and direction of linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Again, that all, a lot of bits and pieces there. Please go back and watch the video for correlation if you have it. This video is, is solely focused on, all right, I understand what correlation is, but how do I find it? So let's just say I have some random data here. This is just some generic data. There's no real context to it. But I got my inputs right here. Those are my explanatory values. I got my outputs. That's my response variable, my Ys. And I want to find the correlation between them, right? So the first thing you actually should always do is take a look at your scatter plot your scatter plot should look somewhat linear because if you see a giant curve in it, then finding correlation would be a silly, stupid thing to do anyway. So let's just stop there and make sure that we checked a look at our scatter plot and we made sure that it was somewhat linear. All right, so how do I find the correlation between these variables? Well, option one, use the formula. Oh my goodness, is this ugly. What you'd have to do is you'd first have to find your average of all of your X's and the average of all of your Y's. The standard deviation of all of your X's is the standard deviation of all your Y's. Then you'd have to take each X, find the Z score. Each Y, find the Z score. Multiply those Z scores together. Add up all of that multiplication. Then you'd have to divide by N minus 1. Okay, the point is it's very ugly, very time consuming. You probably don't want to go that route, but that will get you the correlation. Now, another great way to do correlation very quickly, very easily is using your calculator. This is a TI-84 calculator I'm going to show this on. So what you're going to do here is let's pull up the calculator so I can show you this. So let's say you're on your home screen. The first thing you got to do is you got to put your data into your calculator. So to do that, we're going to hit the stat button right kind of in the middle towards the top. Click on edit. And then in list one, we need our X's. In list two, we need our Y's. So make sure that you have them in there correctly and make sure that the correct X and the correct Y are next to each other. Because remember, when you're talking about two quantitative variables together, bivariate data, you have to make sure that each value, the X and the Y, came from the same individual. So I go, I know this problem is very generic. There's no context to it. But the 5 and the 16.5 are, are paired together. That's two different variables measured from the same item. So 7, 18.9, and so forth. So just type them in there. Very simple to do. Then, um, actually, you could make a scatter plot on your calculator. You know what? I might as well show you that real quick because you do need to make sure your data is linear before you even take a look at correlation. So I'm going to walk you through real quick how to do a scatter plot on your calculator. It's pretty quickly, uh, quick, pretty painless. You're going to hit second Y equals. You're going to go to any one of your three plots. I'm just going to go to plot one. Make sure it's uh, turned on. So highlight the little on and turn and turn it on. Hit enter. Then under type, you're going to select the very first little graph there. It very much looks like a scatter plot, a bunch of little dots there. And then you're going to make sure that the X list is your explanatory data that we had in list one. And the Y list is the explanatory data that we had, or excuse me, the response data that we had in list two. If for some reason those are not there, like let's just say the Y list was empty, to get the L2, you hit second number two. You'll notice above the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six on the keypad are the L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5 and L6 as well. So again, L1, L2, you could choose what you want to do the dots with, whether they be squares, open squares, cross, or dots, you know, whatever you want. Then whenever you're done with that, just kind of quit out of there and then hit zoom nine. This is the key that a lot of kids forget about. This is your zoom stat. Hey, there is my scatter plot. Does it look somewhat linear? Sure. Is it perfect? No, but it looks somewhat linear. So that is an indicator that it is okay. It is appropriate to find correlation. Okay, now back to the point of this video, finding correlation. All right, now that I have my data entered into my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and hit stat. This time I'm going to slide over to calculate. And I'm going to go down to number eight, linear regression, L-I-N-R-E-G, A plus B-X. Now, you could actually do number four as well, but in the stats world, we prefer to have the uh, Y-intercept first and then plus the B-X in the back. I know it might be a little bit different than the algebra world, but in the stats world, that's how we like it. Click on that. You have to confirm that your explanatory data is list one. Your Y data, that's the response, is list two. Leave all of these other things blank, frequency lists, and store the regression equation. Leave that blank and just click on calculate. And you should get your R value right there at the very, very bottom, 0.9471.
If for some reason you do all of this and it doesn't show you R, go to mode and make sure the stat diagnostics is turned on. If you have stat diagnostics turned off, you'll see that down here at the bottom in blue, it will not show you R. So please take note of that. So anyway, quit back. And again, let me just walk through it real quick. Have your data entered in the calculator, slide over to calc, go down to number eight, linear regression, A plus BX. We'll talk a little bit more later in uh, videos why we're using that one, but that's what we want to do. Make sure you're choosing the correct list for your data. Hit calculate. There it is. Now, in other videos, I will teach you what the A and the B are and also R squared. R squared is literally just the R value squared. It does have a really important meaning that we'll talk about later. But right now, we're focusing uh, solely on finding correlation, which is R, 0.9471. So positive. Hey, my graph was positive. 0.9471. My goodness, that's pretty strong. And that's no doubt. Look, these dots are clearly forming a nice line. Not a perfect line. That would, that would get you a correlation of one, but very, very strong. All right. How is a, another way, another way to find correlation is using a website app. Now, listen, if you just go to Google and you type in correlation calculator, you could probably find 30 plus different websites that will calculate correlation for you. I found a pretty cool one. I like this one. Uh, it's, it's at www.statskingdom.com. I'll put a link in the um, video description. But I like this one because it also makes a scatter plot for you and it tells you what R and it actually shows you all the work for finding R. Not that you'd ever need it, but I, I think it's a pretty cool website. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this website up. This website looks like this. It says Stat Kingdom's at the top here. Um, and what you have to do is simply put in your X and Y data. So I actually went ahead and already typed it in. Again, make sure that they correspond. The five needs to be next to the 16.5, the seven next to 18.9. You could even label the X. Like if you're in an actual problem where X is maybe years, you could put in years there. And the Y is maybe uh, the height of something. You could type in height there. So it's kind of cool that you could personalize it there. But once you got your data typed in for X and Y, all you gotta do is scroll down and hit calculate. And boom, there it is, the uh, correlation coefficient, its full name that some people in the advanced stats world call it the Pearson correlation coefficient. Don't worry about that right now. But the correlation is 0.9471, even gives it to you in nice uh, little indicator here showing uh, negative one to one. I kind of like that little, little um, like a gauge there. It's kind of cool. But anyway, listen, all you need is 0.9471. A couple other things are given there, but that's something that we'll talk about later in the year. Um, and then again, if you scroll down again, it, it gives you that nice scatter plot. It uses little triangles. Don't know really why, but whatever. It's cool. I love it. And then it also puts in a regression line that goes through your data that we're going to talk about um, in other videos as well. And if you scroll down, it does show you kind of like all the calculations as to where that came from. Not necessarily needed whatsoever, um, but it, there's a lot of cool things here that you could use later on, but not right now. What I care about is that cool scatter plot and the fact that it gives me R. Now there is a fourth option, a fourth way is that it, it's just given to you. And a lot of times um, on a test, on a quiz, on a worksheet, instead of making you waste your time to find R and maybe even doing it wrong, sometimes we'll just give it to you, right? So, you know, in a nice world, maybe I'll just tell you, hey, here's R, 0.9471. So um, that would be even better, right? Now, another thing that happens is there are these things called linear regression output tables the point is, is that there are different computer programs where you put the X's in, you put the Y's in, and boom, out comes a bunch of information. Sometimes you actually don't get R, but they do give you R squared. Now, remember, R squared is literally just R. So if I take 0.9471 and I square it, I get 0.8970 rounding that a little bit. So just be aware that if you are not given R, maybe you are given R squared. And if you know R squared, my goodness, if you are listening to this video, I hope you know all you got to do is take a square root of both sides. So if you take a square root of 0 0.8970, you will get back to the 0 0.9471. So a lot of times they do give you R. That would be obviously great. But sometimes for whatever reason, R squared is given instead. And all you got to do is take the square root to find R. Not, not, not too bad. Not too bad. So again, I've given you four different ways. Use the formula. Use your calculator. Use technology, website. I love the Stats Kingdom one. It's pretty cool. Or in a perfect situation, you don't even have to waste your time at R and I'll just give you what R is. But 
What actually matters more than anything is that you understand what R represents. It's a numerical value that measures the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. So there you go, four different ways to get R. Hopefully you learned and hopefully you enjoy.